Hello and welcome to Droix. A bit of a different video today. Unfortunately we could not use the original audio as the office is quite noisy so we have recorded a voiceover. The Ioneer Pro being an AMD based system doesn't have Thunderbolt support so it's not possible to connect an external eGPU and use it as a primary graphics card. We got talking in the office and come up with an idea that could make this possible. We worked out which parts we might need and got started on the project. We started off with stealing the coffee table, sofas and finally putting LED strips behind the calyx. Here's an overview of what we did. We have a bog standard Ioneer Pro that we use in the office for testing. There's some screws on the back which need removing and two of them have warranty stickers on them. So it will void your warranty if for some stupid reason you want to try this at home. You will see the NVMe SSD which would normally be screwed down to keep secure. We removed SSD as we will be using the PCIe NVMe SSD slot for something else. Now to connect this great big GeForce 3070 Ti to the Ioneer Pro. For this you will need a decent power supply to power the graphics card. We are using the power supply from our Razer X eGPU case. The power supply is connected to the riser via the 24 pin connector. We are not using the power supply to directly power the graphics card but we'll power it through the riser itself. If you add a modular PSU you could disconnect these cords. Instead we are using the riser's power cables to power the graphics card. You will need to use these two cables otherwise you will get issues with powering on and off the eGPU. To connect the graphics card to the Ioneer Pro we are using a NVMe connector cable which is the same as what the SSD slots into. There are two connectors that on this riser are using HDMI plugs. It's just what the manufacturer used for data transfer instead of custom made connectors. They are numbered 1 and 2 and need to be inserted into their respective ports on the riser. We double checked everything to ensure it's all plugged in correctly and securely in place. Next we connected the NVMe data cable to the Ioneer Pro. You can put back in the screw to keep it secure or like during our testing you can rest the plant pot on top to hold it down. Now to fit the graphics card. As mentioned we are using an Nvidia GeForce 3070 Ti but any decent graphics card will do. We installed it on the riser and screwed it into place to help keep it a bit more secure. And then fit the two power cables from the riser to the graphics card. Next we need some storage to run Windows from. As we are using the NVMe slot on the Ioneer Pro we need an alternative. We are instead using a NVMe reader which connects via USB Type-C. You won't get the same transfer speeds as you would in a NVMe slot but it's good enough to try for now. So continuing our janky setup we have our patented NVMe SSD holder technique. We can't show the final stage as it's top secret. You can plug in the USB Type-C into the second port on the top of the device if it was facing you. We will be using the bottom port for powering the Ioneer Pro. And now to boot up and see if this works. This is where we run into an issue. Trying to boot Windows from external USB storage does not work and Windows will blue screen. Fortunately there is a workaround but it does mean you will have to reinstall Windows. 
We found a program called Win to USB, which does some tricks that allows Windows to boot from USB drives. We chose Windows 10, but 11 will also work. We then put that ISO through Win to USB to work its magic, and after several minutes, it wrote a fresh Windows install onto the SSD. And now to switch everything back on and boot Windows for the second time. This time we had success. After going through the boring Windows setup, which we have skipped over here, we are on the desktop and displaying through the GeForce. It was unfortunately using the basic display driver at 800 by 600 resolution, so we tried installing the Nvidia drivers. While it recognised there was a GeForce connected and it installed the drivers, they did not actually activate and the display remained as before. After some searching online, we found there's an issue with Nvidia eGPUs running over PCIe. But some bright chaps at the eGPU.io forums have a script that fixes the issue. The link to it is in the description. We ran the script and Windows switched over to the Nvidia drivers. The monitor went blank for a few seconds and we now have glorious 4K. We continued with updating Windows and installed a bunch of games to check out. Now for the big test. Does it use the external graphics card to run games? First, we will start with something a little less demanding, Tomb Raider. We are running at 4K on the high settings and everything appears to be working fine. A couple of things to mention while we watch some gameplay footage. With the NVMe cable installed, you won't be able to close the back of the case on the Iron EO. You probably could cut a piece out of the back large enough for the cable to fit through if you really wanted to. If there is enough demand, we can get some replacement backs from Aya for you to mod. Secondly, not being able to use the Ioneer controller due to the lid being off, some games may not work with external controllers as it has one built in. So it will see any additional joysticks as player 2, player 3 etc. You can disable the controller in device manager and use an external one with no issues. Third, and probably the most important, is that this setup is not 100% perfect. We have a few different games and some would simply not work. We wanted to show Crisis Remastered but it didn't run, so no, it doesn't run Crisis. This could be due to running the OS off USB or compatibility issues with external graphics cards for example. Also, some games may just randomly crash whilst you're playing. We think this might be due to the NVMe SSD reader being a bit rubbish. And last but not least, a big thanks to fellow Droic staff member Chris, who spent a lot of time working on this experiment. And now we will try Forza Horizon 5 on extreme settings at 4K. On our recent 1x player mini review, we got 41 FPS with the 3070 Ti at the end of the benchmark. The Ioneer Pro with 3070 Ti eGPU scores 40 frames per second. We ran the benchmark again whilst capturing some B-roll footage and did get 41. So the performance is in line with the 1x player mini which we expected. Both devices do not use 100% of the CPU and the bottleneck is the graphics card when run at 4K Extreme. So that's the end of our little experiment to get an eGPU working on a AMD device, namely the Ioneer Pro. It went a lot better than we expected and I think with spending some more time on a faster storage solution, maybe using Wi-Fi port instead, we can improve reliability. We have a blog post with more detailed information on the hardware parts we used and some other additional information. The link is in the description if you are interested in learning more. Let us know in the comments what you think. Is there anything that would improve the performance of the setup for example? Or would you like to see more experiment videos like this? Let us know and we may come back and revisit this experiment with the Io Neo next. Thanks for watching, please do subscribe and share on social media as we would love to do more videos like this in the future.